Hey guys, welcome back to another exclusive podcast from IronFX. At IronFX, we're dedicated to bringing you the absolute best trading education to help you take your trading to the next level. In today's podcast, we'll be talking about NFPs and how does it affect the market, right? Okay, so my name is Ketan and um, uh, let, first of all, what are NFPs? What does this mean, right? Okay, so NFP stands for, uh, it's an abbreviation for non-farm payroll, okay? So non-farm payrolls are a key economic indicator for the US and it represents the total number of paid workers excluding those employed by farms, the federal government, private households and non-profit organizations, right? Hence the term non-farm, right? It is uh, a very important economic indicator for analysts, for economists, for traders and many other market participants. Okay, so this report uh, is released every month and typically it is released on the first Friday of each month. Okay, so this uh, it tells us the total monthly increases or decreases of paid US workers across most sectors or industry and industries. So increasing numbers may show economic expansion, but may also give reasons, uh, sorry, may give investors reasons to be concerned about inflation and uh, other broader economic concerns. Right. So it's a, it is an important economic indicator related to US employment, right? Okay, so where can we find more data about NFPs? Okay, so what we have included in the show notes as well is a link uh, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that shows us uh, employment levels for total non-farm. Okay, so this is an interesting uh, chart for you to look at and see how employment levels have changed through various uh, periods in time. So the chart here, if you were to click on the link and go to it, go to the site, it will show you the history of non-farm payroll levels from March of 2003 all the way to the present time. Right? It'll show you how employment figures decreased during the great financial crisis in uh, 2007 to 2009 and how employment has steadily picked up all the way to the point where we had the pandemic lockdowns in early 2020. Okay, so, but since then, uh, employment in the US has rebounded pretty strongly and it has now surpassed pre-COVID levels, okay? So just prior to uh, the pandemic lockdowns, total non-farm employment in the US was about 152 million. And by... Uh, roughly the second half of 2022, uh, total non-farm has exceeded the pre-COVID high. So as, as you can see in the chart, and as you can also imagine, the labor market has rebounded strongly and is continuing to grow. And, with the, and the current or the most recent reading was for the month of March, where total non-farm employment grew to 155 Point six million people, right? So this is the total number uh, of non-farm employees. And when the data is released, it talks about the changes, right? The monthly changes. So when you're looking at the calendar, for example, if you look at Forex Factory and you search for NFPs, the forecast number and the previous month number is actually referring to the changes in employment levels. Okay, it is not looking at uh, the total absolute number of uh, employed people, but rather the change on a monthly basis. So if it's a positive number, if, if the previous month's number was a positive number, it means that there was an increase of X amount of employees. And if the forecast has a positive number, it means that uh, markets and analysts are expecting an increase 
in monthly uh, levels. And conversely, if there's a negative number, it means that uh, economies are expecting uh, employment levels to drop. Okay, so that's what it basically means when we're looking at uh, previous historical uh, changes in NFP levels and the forecast. So typically when you go to Forex Factory and you look at it, it won't give you the total absolute um, number of 155 million uh, employed people, but rather it gives you the monthly changes in the levels, which is what is important, right? So, for example, if the forecast is for 100,000, uh, positive 100,000, that means markets or analysts, analysts and economists are expecting um, employment levels or the previous month's employment levels to increase by at least 100,000. So what this means is jobs are continue, continually being added to the labor market. So that means uh, corporations and companies are still hiring actively across sectors. And the good thing about this site is you are able to break down into the various um, industries and sectors. So for example, you can look at total non-farm as a whole. You can also go down into mining and logging, construction, manufacturing, retail trade, financial activities, information, and a whole list of other um, sectors and industries. So you can see which sectors are growing, which sectors are contracting, right? Okay, so typically when employment levels are increasing, the NFP uh, number, the change in NFPs are increasing, it means that the economy is growing, uh, the labor force is growing, so we can expect good GDP numbers to come in. Conversely, when employment levels start falling, it means businesses are not hiring as much as they should be and they are probably uh, starting to uh, lay off workers as well. So on this chart as, and on this side as well, you're also able to view the unemployment rate as well. So naturally, when the unemployment rate goes up, the change in NFPs become negative, right? It's a inverse relationship. So, okay, now how can we use the data uh, in, or how can we use the data for trading, right? So, when the number, okay, it, it, this also depends on the type of environment we are in. So, currently, in the last 15 to 18 months, the world, not only the US, but the world has been in an inflationary environment so what central banks around the world are doing now they are uh, expect led by the federal reserve they are increasing interest rates in order to combat inflation right raising interest rates is one of the tools that the federal reserve has to combat inflation and by making borrowing more expensive for corporations for households for the individuals they are hoping to pull back demand from these participants. So when demand pulls back, we expect prices to uh, probably... Uh, what, what's the word for it? Prices to probably um, not stagnate, but to consolidate. Sorry, yeah, the word I was looking for was consolidate, consolidate. And for a while before, starting to drop off. Right, so when demand falls, prices fall, so ultimately uh, inflation at uh, the wholesale level and inflate which is PPI, producer price index, and inflation at the consumer level, which is tracked by CPI, starts to fall. Now, how does all of this tie in with NFPs? Because as the Fed Federal Reserve or the Fed is raising interest rates, they want to make sure that people are still being employed. They don't want to end up in a situation where they are aggressively raising interest rates and we have the labor market falling apart. So in the early parts of the interest rate cycle, the strong 
a strong NFP number or a month positive monthly change number would mean that the labor market is resilient, is growing, is very strong. So that means the Federal Reserve can still continue to hike interest rates aggressively, which is what we saw in 2022, where the Federal Reserve was raising interest rates by 75 basis points. So 75 basis points is act, is just, uh, if you want to convert, uh, <coughs> interpret it as a percentage, it is 0.75% or, or three quarters of a percentage point. So when we know that the monthly readings of the NFP are coming up positive every month, the Fed knows very well that they can continue to hike interest rates aggressively. So what this means is bond yields will start going up, the dollar index will start rising, and given that the economy is still growing, the labor market is still strong, the Fed continues to increase interest rates, which is what we saw in 2022. So hence, by combining NFP numbers and inflation data and looking at how the Federal Reserve is um, uh, aggressively increasing interest rates, we are able to f form an understanding of where uh, currency markets will move. So once you know that the labor market is strong, the US economy is strong, the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates, which means based on strong NFP numbers, which means that bond yields start rising, the value of the dollar index start rising. That means conversely, that means all the major pairs against the dollar will start to weaken. right? So that is why we saw dollar yen shoot up as high as 152 uh, in, the, in 2022. We saw the euro drop heavily as well as the cable dropping heavily and of course all the other major currency pairs. This was a move that we saw from early 2022 all the way till uh, August and September of uh, 2022. So for a good eight to nine months when we had strong NFP numbers, the Fed, of course the NFP numbers are not the are not the only economic indicator that the Fed looks at, but combining NFP with other data points of the economy, the Fed was uh, convinced that they could raise interest rates aggressively to combat inflation. So when they were doing that and NFP numbers were coming out month after month uh, on a very strong at a very strong rate, bond yields were rising which which uh, created a lot of demand for US dollars. So, so the, the dollar index was rising and hence euro fell, cable fan fell and the US <coughs> dollar yen was rising. So this was how we would have used NFPs together with other data such as the unemployment rate and looking at inflation data and looking at how quickly the Fed was raising rates we were able to form a picture that the dollar is going to rise very strongly against the rest of uh, its counterparts and you would be wanting to be long the dollar index. Okay, now as we come uh, to 2023 where inflation looks to have peaked and is coming down, NFP numbers are still strong and the Fed appears to be slowing down with regards to interest rate hikes. So, um, what we can gather is the next FOMC meeting is coming up in May, early May, I believe it's 2nd and 3rd of May, where market participants expect the Federal Reserve to uh, raise interest rates by 25 basis points again. So, because despite all the banking crisis that we've seen uh, in early March, we can see the US economy is still strong. Q1 GDP uh, numbers were good. NFP's numbers have been good. Civilian uh, unemployment rate 
is ranging between 3.5 and 3.7 percent. This has been also like the lowest levels in almost 40 years. So we can see the U.S. economy is still very, very resilient. The labor market is very tight, very robust. So the Fed can probably is very likely to raise interest rates in uh, May as well. So by looking at all these uh, various um, economic data points and looking at how bond yields, uh, U.S. bond yields uh, performing, we can also determine how the dollar index um, will 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 perform as well, and that will help us to determine what the major currency pairs are doing. Right. So in the in the third and fourth quarter of last year, we saw the dollar index pulling back very sharply. We also saw bond yields, U.S. bond yields starting to fall. So this was a period where um, we had the euro rising, bouncing back strongly, cable bouncing back strongly, and the yen gaining strength against the U.S. dollar. Right. So it is important to understand what NFPs are, what how do they affect the market, and how often the the data is released. But we cannot take any data point in isolation, right? So we have to take all, um, not all, but a few various economic data points and piece the picture together to, de to determine where uh, the markets are heading and so that we are able to form a picture and try and uh, establish the best trading opportunities for, for ourselves. Okay, so this is um, this is yeah. So we've come yeah. Okay, so I think I've pretty much covered um, everything that we wanted to discuss today. So remember the link for the NFP website by Bureau of Labor Statistics will be included in the show notes. So please do click on it, and you can explore the the website and see how employment numbers have changed over time and how the various sectors and industries have also uh, performed right okay and yeah so okay I hope this has been a, a good listen for you guys so that's it for me for today on NFP on NFPs non-farm payrolls do remember to, to subscribe to our podcast uh, here at INFX, we are dedicated to bringing you the very best trading education to take your trading to the next level. Until then, stay safe and trace, trade safe. All right, take care, guys.